This is Resonance 104.4 FM. Stands for flipping marvellous, of course. Uh, we're also on bohemianbritain.com. How are you? I'm Nick Hennigan, and welcome to another slice of literary London, where we talk about, well, kind of things literary and London-y, but oh no, not this time. Because... You may have heard, if you're in England anyway, that uh, there's a bit of a sporting event happening this weekend. It's the finals of the European Football Championship. What's that got to do with literature, I hear you cry? Don't cry. It's all right. It has a lot, actually. Partly because I produced a play once called An Evening with Gary Lineker, which was a comedy, which we took on a national tour throughout the United Kingdom. Uh, and we sort of... I'm not a massive football fan, to be honest. Although I am thinking of playing You'll Never Walk Alone, of course, for Liverpool. And of course, keep right on to the end of the road is the anthem of Birmingham City Football Club. I'm sure Aston Villa's got one, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, and of course, there are various, there are various uh, writers and artists who have been involved in creating music around the theme of football. So I thought it's a bit of an oddity, but why not? That's what we can do on Resonance FM and on Bohemian Britain. We can get very bohemian. So, for the next half hour or so, let your ears luxuriate. In 60 years of football songs, and with apologies to Wales and Scotland uh, and other parts of the world, of course, I have just stuck with kind of England-y songs, apart from one, which I'll explain later on. But the very first uh, football song uh, was released in this country anyway, as far as I am aware, 60 odd years ago. It was 1966 and England went World Cup willy mad. Hmm? Yes, the mascot for uh, the England 1966 team was a little lion with a, a Union Jack jersey with World Cup emblazoned on the front. And of course, it was because uh, the World Cup was for the first time played in the UK, in England. Uh, the final was at Wembley, famously. Uh, England played Germany and won just in the last minute. Uh, um, the actual tr uh, total, um, the t I should say, the trophy, the Jules Rimet trophy, was actually stolen uh, during the uh, uh, during 1966, prior to the uh, World Cup, um, and it was later recovered by a dog named Pickles, who was later commended and gained a cult following for his heroism. I'm not quite sure what Pickles did. I think he led his owner to the cup, and there was the jewelry uh, trophy stuck in a hedge or something like that. But enough of that. What we want to hear is the raw emotion and the glory of the music. So. To start with, it's back to 1966. By the way, the last time that England's men's team won a major tournament. Could it change this weekend? By the time you're listening to this, you may well know. <laughs> There's a football fella, you all know his name And the papers tell us he's in the Hall of Fame Wherever he goes, he'll be all the rage Cos he's the new sensation of the age Dressed in red, white and blue He's World Cup Willie, we all love him too World Cup Willie, he's tough as a lion That we're all so happy like one big family Now we've found someone who makes the rafters ring Welcome to a brand new soccer king All dressed in red, white and blue That's World Cup Willie We all love him too World Cup Willie He's tough as a lion We'll soon know Willie's song Wherever he goes He'll be all the rage Cos he's the new sensation of the age All dressed in red, white and blue That's World Cup Willie We all love him too World Cup Willie He's tough as a lion And never will give up That's why Willie Everybody! Willie! Willie! He's 
Ah, oh, good stuff, of course. That was Lonnie Donegan and World Cup Willie from 1966. Yeah. Uh, England won the World Cup that year. It was the last major tournament, as I've mentioned, that uh, the men's team have won, although the Lionesses have done slightly better. But then four years later, English hopes were high, and there was another World Cup song. <laughs> And as I mentioned, England did not win that World Cup, the uh, Soccer World Cup. I'll just say that for my American friends because I know you talk about soccer quite a lot. On the London Literary Pub Crawl, we often have Americans who ask about soccer. And and most English men uh, and British people really kind of cringe a little bit, but that's all right because we love you. Yeah. The World Soccer Cup. No, I can't keep saying soccer. The World Cup. Anyway, the FIFA World Cup. Uh, we didn't win it in 1970. When I say we, of course, I choose to be English, Irish, Welsh. I've got connections with all. Occasionally Scottish as well, because I spend a month of the year up there at the Edinburgh Fringe. Oh, well, I'm going up this year, by the way. If you're going to be in Edinburgh in August, do let me know. Drop me an email. As always, you can get in touch. It's um, radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk. Radio at mavericktheatre.co.uk. Or I've got my own personal <clears throat> Yes, email now, nick at bohemianbritain.com. Nick, N-I-C-K, at bohemianbritain.com. So if you're going to be in Edinburgh, do let me know. We're also, if you're a writer, uh, we're doing the very first London Edinburgh Literary Pub Crawl. <laughs> so I've kind of taken the London Literary Pub Crawl and uh, sort of adapted it for Edinburgh. Actually, that's not quite right. I've rewritten it for Edinburgh because Edinburgh is a beautiful city. The first UNESCO World Literary uh, Heritage City, I do believe. Uh, and it's um, I'm in love with Edinburgh. It's great. It's hard not to be in love with Edinburgh, even out of uh, fringe time. In fact, sometimes it's much nicer out of fringe time. But I'm not allowed to say that. Uh, so if you are in Edinburgh and if you're a writer, we've created... <coughs> excuse me, it's the emotion, loves <coughs> sort of a whole month in Edinburgh, um, created a few guest slots. So if you're a writer and you've got some poetry you want to try out or a short story, they're only going to be about five minutes because of the constraints of time in Edinburgh. But then do get in touch if you're a writer or you want to just showcase a little bit of new writing in front of um, an audience, uh, then, uh, yeah, do so. Drop me a line. Nick at uh, bohemianbritain.com. Nick at bohemianbritain.com. But meanwhile, back to the football and we enter... The modern era. Germany will defend the tunnel end, away to our left. This is exactly the way they started in the World Cup final of 66. Germany playing from left to right and immediately taking the possession. 
and Haman goes for it. Oh, straight through David Seaman. The ball skids along the turf. That was all of 35 yards out. Seaman shakes his ponytail, and it's England nil, Germany won. I woke up today with this feeling the better things are coming my way. Gerard from range, powers the jump, what a goal, Steven Gerrard! Oh, it was brilliant! Owen on a hat-trick for England, Michael Owen! Hat-trick hero! England is 3-1 up! When you're Free kick over the top, shutting him with a touch. Oh, yes! It's in! We're back in the game! Oh, my word! Teddy Sheringham, England won, Grace won. Get on up when you're down, baby, take a good look around. I know it's not much, but it's okay. We'll keep on moving. David Beckham, right for the goes for goal! Oh, yes! 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 Oh, my God! England are through to the World Cup Finals! Oh, great. That was five and the remix song from 2002. And is there anything more amusing than listening to sports commentators get slightly hysterical? I always remember a sports commentator on BRMB, which was a radio station I worked at in the Midlands in Birmingham some years ago. And his name was George Gavin. You may know him because he went on to Sky TV and he's a lovely bloke, um, but fairly placid. At least that was until Aston Villa scored the winning goal in the European uh, Championships. Um, I had a recording of it for years, and I wish I could find it again, because I used to play it a lot. <laughs> and particularly those that knew George Gavin, the normally placid, very nice, uh, straight journalist, getting slightly hysterical, I think he's probably the kindest I can say to George. Uh, and of course, Aston, Aston Villa won, and it was a brilliant event for the Midlands, um, even though I'm a blue nose, of course, obviously. Keep right on! But it was a marvellous, <clears throat> a marvellous event. Um, I'm Nick Hennigan. This is Literary London. It's your football companion, really. England are in the final of the uh, FIFA European Cup. Their first... It's not actually... Their, if they were to win this weekend, it would be their first major trophy for 60 years. 
So there's a fair bit of excitement. And um, I also quite love the drama of football. If you think about it, it's kind of got goodies, it's got baddies. Uh, there's the tension, there's, there's frustration, there's anger. All life is in a football game, arguably. Or maybe I should do some poetry about it. If you've got any football poetry, then do let me know. <laughs> Again, you can email uh, nick at bohemianbritain.com. Nick at bohemianbritain.com. Um, and this is Residence 104.4 FM, Literary London. It's your sporting companion. We're looking at the drama of football and songs that have been written um, throughout the years. I've got an interesting one here which I might share with you. And it's sort of not not the best known necessarily football songs. Um, but I quite like it. It's by Ricky Martin. Okay. See what you think of this. <laughs>
Great stuff, and I love how these songs always end up with crowds cheering, don't they? That was The Cup of Life uh, by Ricky Martin, which was the official um, theme song of the World Cup from France, uh, 1998. Didn't end too well for England then either. The La Cup, what's it, Cup of Life? La Copa de la Vida. Yeah, I'm not so good at French. Um, so that was that was interesting, wasn't it? I kind of like that. You know, it's fairly uppy for the spirits. We're looking at football songs, and I've got a couple of classics now. I've just got to do. Sit back, crack a cold one, get a load of these. Well, some of the crowd are on the pitch. Well, some of the crowd are on the pitch. They think it's all over, but it is now.
beautiful English game. We're not creative enough, and we're not positive enough. It's coming home, it's coming home, it's coming, football's coming home. We'll go on getting back, so I'm getting back, so I'm getting back, so I'm getting back. So sure that England's gonna throw it away, gonna blow it away, but I know they can play. Cause I remember three nights on the shirts. Jules remain still gleaming. Thirty years of hurt. Never stop me dreaming. So many jokes, so many. in the ball and I'll be dancing three nights on the shirt Jules remain still gleaming thirty years of hurt never stop me Three lines, Frank Skinner and the Lightning Seeds, and before that, World in Motion. And that's it. That's our drama of football music. I hope you have a great weekend. Come on, England! And Ireland, Scotland, and I quite like Spain as well. But anyway, you get the idea. I'll see you next time. I'm Nick Hennigan. Uh, this is Literary London on BohemianBritain.com, but also on Resonance 104.4 FM.